what happens after a flood hits a community. How do firms counteract the loss of big contracts? Who eased a crisis with a crease? Industry on Parade. Peabody Award winner for public service, produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. A mere American metropolis crippled by a disastrous flood. The city's business and industrial districts paralyzed, with transportation brought to a standstill. Factories are ruined. Homes destroyed. The flood wrecks many industrial plants on which the population relies for supplies and for livelihood. It takes a tremendous effort to get things back in shape. And industry wastes no time helping its neighbors directly and also by rushing back into operation itself, thus restoring the needed jobs, goods, and services. A dramatic story. Yet natural disasters are but one of the many kinds of crises industry must solve every year to preserve and expand production and payrolls. Another recurring crisis is caused by the ups and downs of government orders for equipment like the military aircraft components this plant turns out. At one moment, the federal government will decide to push ahead with large contracts for a particular kind of defense hardware. To handle such work, Industry must spend enormous amounts on research and even more on equipment and wages. But all these jobs and much of the capital savings the public invests in plants for defense production are threatened in these days of indecision by sudden cancellation. That's why this plant and others have been busy devising ingenious ways to absorb the shocks, to make the transition smooth. This firm, for example, has found that the same skills required for the defense production we saw can be utilized in producing metal cans for the civilian market. Thus, by careful planning, industry has been able to switch quickly from one kind of production to another, maintaining the greatest potential for defense production the world has ever seen, while at the same time turning out civilian products in sufficient quantity to raise our standard of living to levels unequaled in history. While industrial disruptions caused by shifting government decisions have not been entirely eliminated, management has learned to ease them considerably. Another way in which production ups and downs are smooth is diversification of the type practiced by this manufacturer of refrigeration equipment. The company started as a shipbuilder, but shipbuilding is especially sensitive to shifting world politics. And so, to keep its operation going steadily, the firm decided some years ago to extend its line of products. In addition to freezers, it produces elsewhere in the same plant kitchen cabinets, dry cleaning machines, any number of things that have little or nothing to do with ships and yet are logical products of a shipbuilder's machines and skills. A different kind of problem is a change of management or ownership. At this concrete pipe manufacturing company, the problem was caused by the death of the founder. It was solved when his wife took over, keeping the business going and growing, too. The new president's skill and determination have kept the machines and the workers busy, but it wasn't easy. Or today, steep inheritance taxes often force companies to be sold out when owners die. Advance arrangements long before death occurs are often required to preserve plants and jobs. Even the march of technological progress brings problems. Take the synthetic fibers responsible for major benefits to most of us in recent years. They have created difficulties, too, for industries using older materials. Instead of throwing up their hands in dismay, however, these industries have turned to additional research in order to find out exactly what the new synthetics can do and how they might best be used. One result was the discovery that blends of the new fibers with the old offer advantages neither the new nor the old can supply by themselves. Acting on this knowledge, industrial management mapped new strategy, 
coming up with new operating methods, new products that actually promised the possibility of increased business rather than disruption and cutbacks. The machines of the pre-synthetic days and the skills it took to operate them didn't have to be thrown out after all. They were kept working, kept busy, turning out fabrics that employed natural fibers as well as the man-made variety in combination and separately. Meanwhile, other firms were tackling the problem in a completely different way, seeking to meet the competition by improving natural fibers like cotton and wool. Here, a sample of all wool fabric with a pressed in crease is soaked in hot water, 170 degrees hot. Then in goes a second swatch. Half of each sample has been permanently creased with the help of a newly developed setting solution. This is the result, the treated portion of each sample retaining the crease, the untreated portion losing it completely. This demonstration illustrates the success of a long and costly research program financed by the wool industry in its effort to give 100% wool garments the ability to hold a durable crease or pleat and thus to make them more desirable. Humidity will not affect garments so treated, and neither will rain. In fact, the crease is actually impervious to live steam, as we'll see here. From this point, the researchers went on to work on development of wool fabric that can be washed and dried at home like many synthetics, though retaining all the desirable characteristics for which wool is famous. At this plant, men work on another kind of industrial transition that appears to some people to be disruptive, namely automation. The electronic computer is among the latest in the long series of new tools with which industry always has sought improved ways to make better products. What they're doing here is feeding into the computer various formula representing different automatic processes on a continuous factory production line. When they are through with this programming, the computer will be put to work multiplying each human worker's output tremendously. Just as previous technological advances in methods and processes have brought changes in industrial operations, so do the latest ones, too. But the changes are temporary and limited. For the overall effect of the advanced technology is to increase demand for the product by improving it and lowering its cost. As a result, technological advancement, far from cutting the need for workers, actually has increased it while shortening hours and improving working conditions. In the steel industry, for example, the back-breaking jobs of old have been eliminated, but the total number of workers the industry normally employs has mounted steadily through the years. Everything may seem to be done by push buttons in modern plants, but a glance at the constantly increasing employment figures will dispel the impression that people are no longer required. As a matter of fact, people are the heart of American industry, the ones who man the machines and the ones who do the managing. To eliminate even temporary dislocation, management often plans years ahead. It plans for new products and jobs, and it seeks to ensure the steady flow of sales and profits that will pay for the improvements and help meet the heavy tax bills and the demands of labor. A company that's seen many storms in its long life and weathered all of them, this firm could have faded with the fashions of the gay 90s. Its first product was hem bindings for women's skirts to keep them from wearing out as they dragged along the ground. But the machines didn't stop working when the skirts stopped dragging. Instead, the firm turned to other, newer products that require similar kinds of narrow loom operations to such things as weather stripping for automobile windows.
the obsolescence that's hit this firm's products and methods repeatedly has been met time and time again by the development of new ones. For a hundred years, the company has rolled with the punches, always growing and changing with the times. It was international politics that threatened America's manufacturers of paintbrushes when the communist conquest of China cut off access to the very best hog bristles. Did these companies just sit back and settle for something almost as good? Not by a long shot. They went to work developing a synthetic variety and a unique method that duplicates in the man-made bristles the split ends that occur naturally in the best of the older brands. The operation we see here also is the result of an industrial effort to ensure a continuing flow of a raw material in danger of giving out. The rock is taconite, and the process it's going through was developed to extract from the once useless material the 25% iron it contains. Taconite ore now costs somewhat more than high-grade natural ore, but domestic by the steel industry has been spending heavily to develop the process that taps this new source. Such investments are a heavy drain on profits, but they're absolutely necessary to avoid a major industrial disruption in the years ahead. To maintain the supply of essential steel for future generations, taconite is an ace in the hole, which even now relieves much of the danger we otherwise would face if a war should cut off the new foreign iron sources which industry also has spent much to develop. High in the Rocky Mountains, this mine also protects us from too much dependence on overseas supplies. Here, the ore is molybdenum, essential in making hard steel alloys. Tungsten does the job better, but it's found mostly behind the Iron Curtain. So it's a good thing our own industry has developed this molybdenum supply. And so it goes. Every day throughout the land, you'll find the costly search continuing for new sources of raw materials. One more way industry works to solve countless crises before they can disrupt our personal and national economy. When the present heavy tax burdens are brought down, industry will be able to do even better and forge ahead even faster for the benefit of all of us. American industry, builder of a better tomorrow, has presented Industry on Parade, a service of the National Association of Manufacturers.